Hello and welcome to this edition of Tomorrow's Tech here in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Today I'm going to be talking to one of our postdocs, Keith. So Keith, tell me what you do. I make particles for drug delivery for medical applications. And it all starts with something that we see every day in the kitchen when we turn on a tap, doesn't it? Tell me about that. That's right. So when you turn on a tap, you get a column of liquid and at a certain point that liquid will break up into droplets. So it gets thinner as it goes and it gets so thin that eventually it starts bulging and that's when you get the droplets. And that's right. That's because of the surface tension of the liquid which squeezes the liquid and breaks it up into droplets. So what we can see is that it's a nice smooth column down to there and then it starts breaking up. Yeah. And drips right. everywhere. <laughs> and drips everywhere. <laughs> okay, so what, how big are these drops do you reckon? probably around a millimetre to half a millimetre. So they're still quite big as, as droplets go? They're, they're pretty big. But you've got a trick to get around this and it involves electric fields, so tell me about that. Right, so when we apply an electric field, um, we can charge the liquid and uh, a charged liquid will try to repel itself. And in that case, we can overcome the surface tension and we can break the droplets up into smaller droplets. And we can actually see that here, we've got a comb, haven't we? So I'm going to rub some silk on a comb, which is going to make some static electricity here, so it bends the column of liquid. So the idea here is that the, when you charge up something with static electricity, you, you, you create an electric field. And even here, we can see that electric field moving the liquid around. That's right. So how does that help you in your research? So we can use this electric field to overcome the surface tension of the liquid and that's one of the main limiting factors in uh, droplet size. So here we've got our metal needle and here we've got our droplet coming off and here we have that long column of liquid and at this point the, the column breaks up into tiny droplets. This is different to what we've got up there, so what's, what's happening to make it different? We have a number of forces at play here. Uh, one of the main ones is the surface tension of the liquid which uh, acts to pull the droplet in upon itself. When we apply the electric field to the needle and to the uh, liquid, we can charge the liquid and we find that the electric stresses act against the surface tension and that helps to create our long thin column here which breaks the droplets up. So the push of the electric field, the liquid repelling itself, is what gives you this very pointy bit at the end, which gives you a very thin column. Yes, that's right. And the droplets that you get using this technique, how small are they? We can get as small as uh, 50 nanometers. So when you've got a really tiny particle like that, what can you do with it? What we find with small particles is if they come in contact with cells, cells like to take them up inside themselves. And that's important, isn't it? Because the outside of a cell, its cell membrane, is a, a sort of protective wall of a fortress and it's controlling what goes in and out. So these little particles can get onto the other side of that wall. That's right. They act as kind of Trojan horses in a way. And by delivering them in this way, we can minimise the side effects of the drugs and we can maximise their effectiveness.